I'm sure you hear a lot about high performing agile teams. It's every coach's dreams, you know, scrum masters try to bring their teams there, but what do they look like and are they even possible? Do they even exist? So the key point in this video is actually to help you imagine what they look like, because if you don't know what it looks like when you get there, you cannot bring your team there. So yes, it is possible, but it's really a journey. So what we're going to do in this video is to talk about the traits that high performing agile teams display when they're in action. I'll start with the first one and probably the one that's most forgotten, which is the one most people will see the results of. They get the job done no matter the condition. So high performing agile teams are the teams who really can deliver working software, working product, you name it. So um, it's all very nice and dandy to have all that harmony in the team and high morale, but you're not really out there being able to deliver. Ultimately, teams, especially agile teams, they are formed to fulfill a mission. And what you're going to notice is that those teams, they are able to play with scope. They are able to ask all the right questions and they don't give up until they are satisfied. They really know how to um, communicate with the stakeholders. Basically, they do everything that needs to be done so that the work is delivered in the end of a cycle, an iteration, a milestone, whatever have you. And if you don't find this element of completion of goals successfully and with quality, you can't absolutely be talking about high performing agile teams. So to do that, there are ways of working and obviously those teams processes, um, they do exist, but they are effective in their minimum. There is not much process going on. Sometimes it might seem as if, you know, people just know what to do when and where and how, and in a way that is so, but they, this team really did work hard to get there. They probably started like any other team you see where you try a bunch of processes, a bunch of way of doing things, and you just get clearer and clearer on how you can do your best work especially because your team is stable. So certain things that we learn as a team, we no longer need to document and really fill up little applications of the process. We just go ahead and we do them. So that's what it looks like. It, it, they work in perfect harmony. They know what needs to be done because their processes are effective and minimum. I swear, I don't understand why so many people say things like collaboration is expensive and you know invent other ways in which they can streamline work so that people don't have to collaborate. Well, high performing agile teams, they actually do collaborate. They collaborate a lot. They really understand what it's like. And we're talking here beyond, you know, pair programming or can you sit with me in rubber duck? Yes, the whole team knows how to build on top of each other's ideas. Um, in fact, there's a lot of like a, the team's idea, not the Petula's idea and your idea. We really just go for what is best and you know how to compose and mix and match. But ultimately, there's also something else. This so-called high-performing agile teams can collaborate outside of their team. They know how to establish, you know, human um, and effective interfaces with other teams and with their stakeholders and people who are waiting for some results from the team. They understand the value and they understand how to do it. So they collaborate everywhere with everyone. High performing agile teams know how to keep a sustainable pace. So think that you can keep doing whatever you're doing, whatever work that you do for months to no end and nobody's burning out and work is getting done. Things are being delivered. That is possible. And the so-called high performing agile teams do that by several means. One, they have very clear focus. So they don't just start working on something because someone mentioned somewhere that it's needed. They really go to the source, they try and understand, they negotiate, they say no. That's an important thing. I mean, you can't just keep accepting things on your plate and hoping that they will be delivered, even if you're doing it sequentially. I mean, your, your pile just keep getting um, bigger and bigger. So people that operate in those teams, they really know how to prioritize, they really know how to work on what really matters. And in the end, because they collaborate so much inside and outside, they know really what's possible and they are very effective and efficient in how they deal with their requests and with whatever is it that they are producing without really rushing through these things. And yes, 
There is the so-called high morale. You get to see that people really enjoy working together. There are jokes, there's laughing. There's also a lot of focus. But most importantly, you know, it's not unicorns and sunshine and rainbows, but you really do see a positive attitude, um, can-do attitude. It's more like they accept that anything can be done. And the only question is how. So it's a very proactive team. It's a team that really understands the power of diversity. They probably are very happy and proud of being diverse. And diversity is beyond gender and race and you know any of those things that we traditionally speak of. But just think of it, every human being is very unique and they're all in different levels of learning in their journey. And when all of this presents itself in a team, that is a beautiful space for creativity and for unique ideas to come out. So that is really a huge aspect in the end of the success of the so-called high performing agile teams. So there is one more trait that you should pay attention to, especially if you are the coach trying to get your team to these um, stages of high performance, but that I'll leave for you to read on the blog post down below. You know, I always go a little bit deeper when I write and while you're there, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter to get content exactly at the time that it's produced. And you know that I always have something extra for you in there compared to here in the social media. So I hope this video was useful. Let me know in the comments, give it a like if you like, and if you don't like actually dislike because those things are information for me. So I'll stop here and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.